Welcome, fellow anglers, to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I am Captain Ryan Van Fleet, your host here in the Florida Keys. Each week, I bring you fishing tips, stories, gear reviews, and more to help you maximize your fishing trip, catch big fish, and overall have fun. All right. Now, we're back from Isla Mujeres. What a great getaway. The place is awesome. On New Year's Eve, it's amazing how they these people stay up partying all night until the sun comes up. Now, we went for our usual sunrise walk, and everyone was still in their finest party clothes. It was pretty crazy. Uh, maybe it's the tequila. So this week, I'm going to share with you a true, a true vertical jigging story. A few years back, we had a tropical storm that moved through the Florida Keys. And it was the off season. Now, the off season for us is September through November for the most part. I had not been out fishing as the seas were a mess, and it was the off season, lots of rain. And at this time, my charters were mostly vertical jig charters, as I was the distributor for Jimmy Jigs USA. And most people that booked me during this time frame wanted to go vertical jigging. Now, I needed to pre-fish the Island Rada Hump as that is where I ran most of my blackfin tuna vertical jigging trips. Now, vertical jigging the Isla Mirada hump is extremely popular, and at that time, Instagram seemed to have made vertical jigging great again. Now, before I get on with my story, the hump can be quite the party scene on the water nowadays. <laughs> it is so funny to watch the guy, watching guys put their girlfriends with the bikinis on the rails of their boats, trying to get people to get photos of their boats so they can post it on Instagram and get likes. Or then there's the guy that decides to stop and jump in and take a swim amongst the 100 boats um, while everybody's trying to fish the hump on a Saturday just because he feels like he should. Now, I don't fish the hump the Alamrata hump much because it's just wild and it's kind of a dangerous circus show anymore. And to be honest with you, it's, that's not fun anymore. So, but on days with lighter boat traffic, I really do like the vertical jig, the hump, especially when the blackfin tunas are biting and the seas are light. It is by far the best fishing spot for vertical jigging in South Florida. All right. So I'm going to sidetrack here a little bit and tell you a story. Uh, One secret to making money in the fish and lure business, more specifically geared towards vertical jigs, stick baits, and jig heads, or any other weird attachment lure or gadget that appears to add bling to an existing lure, is to constantly kick out new products and make them look shiny and very pretty for the consumer, and then make a limited run. Now, I learned... um, that once the vertical jigs were gone, they were gone. And that helped create a demand. More and more people wanted them. And the more detailed the lure, the more we sold. Okay, so we actually had regular customers that really did not fish. True story. But they were kind of like hoarders. They never opened the package, but they they loved taking pictures of the jigs that they bought and posting them on Instagram to show people how many they actually owned. Uh, It was a crazy experience and something we hadn't counted on or thought of. They actually collected them and they were some of our best customers. Anyhow, so I like to fish a small crack in the hump. The bait really stacks up there. Even on days when the hump appears to be void, I can always seem to get a bite. Um, I call the spot the hump gutter spot. Uh, Now, most of the time... When I vertical jig, the jig gets dropped. Um, As the jig drops, it gets crushed on the fall. And at this particular phase, when I was vertical jigging, I was using the Daiwa dogfight. It's a beast of a spinning reel. But what happened the next two hours was was a blur. It was 7 p.m. I was one and a half hours into the fight. And for those of you thinking it was a shark or an amberjack, sorry to burst your bubbles, it was not. Remind you, I was fishing a Dio dog fight. It's a, the beast version. Uh, the fish surfaced in the distance, and I can tell you it was crazy as it appeared to be a swordfish dragging me out uh, as it breached, and then it sounded again. Before I knew it, the fish had me out to 800 feet of water. It was dragging me out to sea, and then it got bad. I was out of shape fighting fish is because, you know, I'm a charter boat captain, man. I don't get the fish very often. <laughs> And it was um, it was freaking hot. 
And for those that immediately say, um, get me the belt, well, I had no fighting belt, not to mention I was alone and the sun was setting. And then it happened, the worst. I actually got sick and started puking all over the side of the boat. And, <laughs> and then I lost momentum with the fish. So to keep the line from breaking, um, as I wanted to get that damn fish, I backed off the drag while I puked on myself, mind you. I was alone. Um, my heart started pounding. And all I can think about was uh, what, you know, WTF, man, what was I doing? I was alone. My cell phone had no battery. And trying to get help out here this time, out there that time of year would be a challenge as the last thing I wanted to do was call the Coast Guard. Uh, can you imagine me <laughs> sending a message to a rescue team to get, me, to get me help? Hey, guys, I got my ass whipped by a fish to the point of near blackout, but thanks for helping me out. There was no fucking way I was going to was going to get to that point. I had too much pride, um, so I cut the line. Ugh, it sucked. Uh, that was the first time in my life I actually quit on a fish. And I st still have regrets about it. Obviously, I'm still thinking about it. As it's been a, quite a few years. So I gathered myself and was grateful to be alive. Now, the ride home across the Gulf Stream was pretty cool that night. The sun was set, you know, the sun was setting. It was just an awesome sunset. And when I hit, when I hit 300 feet, um, I powered up the LEDs, put on the autopilot, fired up the radar, put on the satellite weather, and it was all good. I smiled. <laughs> And the only person I told until this podcast, other than my wife, was a client of mine that owned one of those multi-million dollar houses on Ta Tavernier Creek Dead. And if you guys have ever seen those houses, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty badass. Uh, he happened to be chilling with one of his girlfriends on the creek that night. The guy was 80 years old, but he, um, but he had several young girlfriends from Miami that he took fishing. I pulled into his dock. He handed me a, handed me a beer. And then I, I told him the story, he smiled, and dipped his hand into, his, into an old-ass cooler, a multimillionaire with an old-ass cooler. Man, this dude was cool. Uh, he, and then um, what he said to me, I just, I'm always going to remember this. And, you know, we all hate to hear this, but anyways, he says, that's fishing. That's fishing. <laughs> and then our, our conversation went to him um, asking me, when can you take me out to get those big flag yellowtails that you're always catching? Man, I love catching those fish. <laughs> so, the guy was such a riot, man. I miss him. So anything can happen out there, guys. You just have to fish a lot, and you're going to see stuff. Now that I told that story, my mind is on fire about my ultimate mystery fish. Next week, I'm going to go into, into a detailed podcast about vertical jigging, and I'm going to reveal a few secrets. Yes, there are secrets to catching fish on vertical jigs, and I have a bunch. This is a good introduction podcast to a series on vertical jigging because it shows you that you can catch anything on a, when you drop a jig. Thanks for listening, and as always, please let me know if you have any questions. You can email me at goodkarmaryan at gmail.com. I'm going to be doing a question and answer podcast, so definitely email me. You can also find me on Facebook at Good Karma Fishing Charters, Instagram at Good Karma Sport Fishing underscore FL underscore Keys. And please also share this podcast with a fellow angler and check out my website, goodkarmasportfishing.com, and sign up for my monthly newsletter. I aim to provide you with fishing tips and information so you can make the best out of your time fishing. Thanks for listening, and remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good.